really yes. valuable, yes. but it's, yes. it's sentimental. And yep. of course, I have all kinds of odd things, fabrics that are vintage, um, mm -hmm. quilts, cobalt blue glass, right. depression glass. Right. Um, you know, it's just funny the things you, you hang on to. And it's more of a sentimental attachment. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not a financial or, you know, valuable kind of thing. Now it's, I'm going to ask you a loaded question. Are you prepared yourself? Have you done estate planning? So if you were to leave this earth, your daughter would know the treasures and the story behind them? You know, I have, as, a, as an attorney, I, I cannot not have done my estate planning and right. come here with a clear conscience today. Right. That would just right. not be okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but I frankly am at a point in my life where I did not go through and itemize everything I have in my possession mm -hmm. so that everyone in the family would know what it is. I sort of just trusted that everyone would know. Mm -hmm. But but that may be something that I do later on so people understand what is yeah. in my house, yeah. you know. Because literally a quilt that was made by a great-great-grandmother may have a hole in it, the hem may need repair, but it's part of your family heritage. Right. And exactly. nobody's going to know that if they walk in one day and you're gone and they're disposing of stuff. And I dealt with that on a big scale this year because I did several estate settlements and, and one of them was a precious little lady that I know and loved so much. She was so so precious and, and she loved clothes. Now I, I can just overstate she loved clothes. Right. She wore your size and she had you no know, probably a size one size bigger than you, but she had so much stuff. And her children said we had no idea she had so much stuff. She had like multiple closets full of these clothes. And so I have been, we had an estate sale and then we donated to the thrift store. And the thrift store, I might say, if you wear a size eight, you need to go to the thrift store because I've donated tons of size eight stuff. But O'Neill, there was so much cool, cool stuff. And I just said, as I, as I spent time in the home, I really learned more about her she loved people, she loved the Lord, she had like 30 Bibles in the house. She was an amazing person, but I don't think she prepared her children for, I want you to have this, I want you to have great grandma's library table, because out of all the things in the home, nobody claimed great grandma's library table, and it's still there. And I just think, wow, somebody would want that. Maybe mom should have said, now you take that and you take care of it, but mom didn't do that. So it's, it's a little bit of a burden for the kids because they're like, grandma's table, great grandma's table's still sitting there and nobody has asked for it. Those are things that you need to have that conversation with your family. And if it doesn't mean anything to you, if great grandma, my granddaughter tells me this all the time, but nanny, I didn't know any of those people. Right, so there's no attachment. There's, there's no, no attachment. Connection. No. Um, well, then in that case, then somebody needs to put to paper, hey, these are the things that are important. Everything else, if it's not important to you, then just do what you want to with yes. it. Yes, You know, yes. it doesn't hurt my feelings. You're yeah. not living for me. Yeah. You know, I'm going to be gone. You're not living for the dead, basically. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. right. And take advantage of you. It's your brother. You decide what you want to do. She let him take advantage of her. And I sat back and watched that, and I was kind of sad about it because I said, you know, your mom wanted 50-50. He got a free ride for a long time, and I didn't like that because mom did it correctly. And then one of the siblings cowered down to the other one, and I'm watching this from afar, and I'm going, I don't like this. But that's going to happen too. Yeah, and that's, that's tough, but, but the beauty in that is that, I, and I hate to say it, but I get people who come to me and they know who their children are. They know what their children mm -hmm, are. Mm -hmm. And they can say, look, this, this one has been greedy. Always been handing this person mm -hmm. X, Y, Z. I paid for his first house. I, mm -hmm. I did this, I did that. And these other two never asked me for anything. Mm -hmm. Or unfortunately, there's a lot of families that have addiction and there are uh, some children where the parents will liquidate a lot of their savings mm -hmm. for, for mm -hmm. rehab and various mm -hmm. other 
things in the cause of them getting better. Mm -hmm. And I've had people say, look, you know, I spent four hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars on my daughter I'm done and she's received her inheritance mm -hmm. this is it and I'm mm -hmm. not going to be unfair to these other children mm -hmm. and they'll put they'll have me put that in there yeah and that's just it I mean that's the right thing to do that's it that's and, the right thing to do um, you know if you if you put that to paper there's mm -hmm. no reason for the children to squabble you don't leave them wondering or guessing mm -hmm. um, and it's 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 really like I said it's peace of mind for the, the person who's putting these things to paper. Mm -hmm. But it's also, um, it gives you the ability to just let go of that and just be free with your family for whatever time you have left, whether mm -hmm. it be 50 years or, or 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. you know? That's right. Um, so you can just let go of that and just be in the moment and be mm -hmm. present and not mm -hmm. worry about, well, I think I need to change this or think about something else because mm -hmm. my kids can't get along or I can't uh, move forward on this decision. Um, and the thing is people think, well, I'm going to put this to paper and I can't change it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but, but these things are yeah. doc documents that you can, they're movable. You can change them as you need to and it's not an act of Congress to right. get it done. And if you're a couple and he were to pass or she were to pass, then you can change things too. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. just because one's passed and you put that to paper, with whoever's remaining, they can go and do whatever they like. They mm -hmm. can revoke whatever they put to paper. They can just slightly tweak it or keep it the same. Yeah. And most of the time, the way I draft husband and wife type uh, wills is that one gets, and this is usually how they like it, which mm -hmm. everyone would want this kind of marriage mm -hmm. where whatever you have goes to your spouse and right. vice versa. And right. then if they're both gone, then it would trickle down to children. whatever heirs that they've yeah. named if they yeah. have children. And, and that's so important. And, and I learned a lesson in the state of Alabama. Something happened to me that took a lot of stuff away from me, but I was protected by the state of Alabama because the way I had taken title on some property, it was the only thing that I was allowed to keep. And you talk about a hard lesson and, and a, a traumatic time. And I thank God that um, Dean Buttram, who was our attorney in Alabama, told me, he said, Sherry, this is the way it's gonna be. And and I thank, I thank him for it because it was literally all I got because things were changed and um, it's, it's scary. It's very, very scary, but you have to, and, and one of the things that I really want to hit on is because dementia is a real thing. Alzheimer's is a real thing. And you need to talk to your parents today while they are at themselves. I've been caretaker of a lady who has early dementia and she's very confused and she doesn't understand life as it is today and she remembers some things but she doesn't even remember her child's age and she only has one heir who isn't available to care for her so it's important to do it today while we're healthy and while we're at ourselves absolutely and you know it's not just dementia everybody uh, anticipates the possibility of you know, losing your mind older in age, there's all sorts of things that can happen. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you, I've known so many younger people now who, who've had strokes, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, sometimes you recover, sometimes you don't. Sometimes mm -hmm. you don't have all the marbles after that, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes you need help making decisions. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think again, like with the COVID stuff, I mean, there's just so many people who have, um, you know, just had unexpected type of of ailments and um, trying how to nav trying to navigate that um, alongside just the regular life issues and just dealing with real life mm -hmm. um, presents you know a whole other set of challenges. A big but, one. But um, yeah, I mean you don't don't wait till you're old. Don't mm -hmm. don't wait till mm -hmm. you think you're gonna be out to lunch. Well, in the last so four weeks, yeah. uh, a 46 year old neighbor passed away from COVID. A 42-year-old young man with four children and a wife owned a business, had a massive stroke, and went to be with Jesus. That's two examples in the last four weeks. And were they both prepared? I don't think so. I don't think so. Because guys, number one, y'all are jocks. You know, they're just guys, and guys don't think. They always think they're going to be the caretaker, they're going to be the breadwinner, they're going to be the everything. And sometimes they don't prepare for that throwing a ball to your kid one day in the park and the next day you're on a vent in the hospital and that night you die. So it's, it's tough. And, and is it harder for you to get 
men to come in and sit down and say, I need to prepare for taking care of my family, or are they willing to do it? Um, gosh, at the verge of, of sounding sexist, I think it's the same kind of territory that you encounter when it comes to men approaching their health mm -hmm. and medicine. They don't if, take care of themselves, if, yeah. Uh, and, and I think it's our society too. Like there's this message that men are just impervious to damage mm -hmm. and they're supposed to be strong all the time and they're supposed to be the support and mm -hmm. they're supposed to be able to do and accomplish all these things. But I mean, they're, we're all human, they're mm -hmm. still human. Mm -hmm. And you know, even in you know, a medical setting, men don't usually feel a sense of urgency unless there's something very wrong mm -hmm. or they're in pain. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds so wrong, but I mean, I think women are a bit more proactive mm -hmm. um, about those things. And I, I do find that men will come to me because their wife said, Mm -hmm. I need you to go do this because I can't sleep at <laughs> For night. Me. Yes. Please, yes. please yeah. go talk to somebody. Yeah. Or can we go do this together? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. if something happens, this needs to be handled. Like mm -hmm. I don't want to be waiting and wondering if something yeah. happens. Yeah. And uh, you know, again, it's the thing of you know, we we can't know the future. We don't know. Mm -hmm. And the last um, couple of years, I've had some shockers myself mm -hmm. where I've had some husband and wife pairs, and we're so focused on one of the spouses in particular because they're dealing with immediate health issues, mm -hmm. and the whole family's there, and they're like, you know, I know dad's gonna go, and he's got <laughs> heart, he's got AFib, and you know, we've been in and out of the hospital, you know, it's been touch and go, and, and, and mom seems perfectly fine, and then I get a phone call, you know, the week after we drafted a will, mm -hmm. and they're like, hey, mom's gone. Mm -hmm. uh, I and need you're going. Uh, is everything that we put to paper okay? Because yeah. we weren't really expecting that. Yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I get these little surprises every now and then, mm -hmm. and you know, it just goes to show. I mean, it could happen to anybody. Be prepared. Anybody. Be prepared. And yeah, that's the bottom line. Is yeah. you know, you can't account for everything. You can't account for any detail, but you can be prepared as you can based on the information mm -hmm. you have. Well, one of the estates that we've been working on this year, and I want to see if we can show the photos. This is this is a beautiful brick home up in the Morganton Commuters. Wow. And it just, it, it made me cry. Every time I would walk in there, I would pick up one item or look at something, and I would say he adored her. And those are the stories that you want to tell, but then in the end, you also want to make it easy for the kids. It wasn't. She had a 24 place setting of China hoping that each child would want. They didn't want it. They didn't need it. The, the guys are married and they have wives who, wives, you know, wives have their own stuff. They don't care about other people's stuff. The daughter doesn't use China, didn't want it. It was strange that the things that she loved, nobody cherished, you know. And so it was a little bit hard, and I asked the family not to be there for the estate sale. If you, for, for example, this table, if Daddy custom made this table for Mama, and you price it at $50 for an estate sale, and after three or four days nobody buys it, then you reduce the price. Well, you don't want the family watching what they consider an heirloom to bring $25. So I think it's best if you have somebody come in and do the estate sale and you're not involved in it, because as you're dragging out these treasures of gifts you gave mom, and all of a sudden you see that at yard sale they bring $2, and you probably paid a lot more than that for it. So it's, it's a really emotional time. So if you plan the estate well, you also say, I want you children to go in the home and get everything you want and then let somebody else handle the estate, I'm gonna say a bad word, junk. And it's not junk, but it's stuff that the kids don't want. Right. And, and that, I think that's important. And and I, I sometimes will have families like maybe the remaining parent mm -hmm. where they start to see all the stuff in the house mm -hmm. and there's a sense of urgency under them because mm -hmm. they know that mom or dad is elderly mm -hmm. and there's a whole shop full of tractor equipment mm -hmm. and farm equipment or mm -hmm. things to work on cars with mm -hmm. and we dealt with they, all of that. They don't yeah. know 
you know, most lay people, they don't know what to do with that stuff. Mm -hmm. And some of it is actually valuable. It's not junk. It mm -hmm. is, these are mm -hmm. things that somebody could really use and could be converted into real cash exactly. for the family. Yep. And to be under the gun and feel a sense of urgency um, after someone has passed, maybe there's a mortgage on the property and mm -hmm you know, it's falling behind and it needs to be paid or something like that. You don't want to be in that position where you're trying to place a value on something and price something out and liquidating something so fast that you're losing money on exactly. it. Exactly. Don't leave any money on the table right. if you don't have to. Yeah. And so, yeah, I have these folks that will come and they'll be like, you know, we've got a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'll be like, what do you mean? Like, are we talking you know, newspapers filled to the base, mm -hmm. from the basement wall to the attic? Are we, are we talking about um, things like in the shop? Mm -hmm. Is this Tupperware circa 1974? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Like what, what are we talking, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then they'll start talking details. And mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, these, these folks that have these kinds of estates, they, they, they don't really uh, recognize the value in certain mm -hmm. things and, mm -hmm. and maybe the, the tractor that's been sitting out in the yard is, is an afterthought. And they'll be like, well, you know, my grandson may want that tractor. Mm -hmm. You mean your grandson that lives in Midtown, Atlanta? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Will. You know, maybe you can find a, 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 a tractor enthusiast who wants to, you know, restore it. And, and, and you pay can, what it's worth. Right, yeah. right. You know, there's, there's things to do that if you plan far enough ahead, and, and the family has some direction on mm -hmm. it. And there's mm -hmm. people who appraise and, and specialize in placing values mm -hmm. on these things. If, if you have the time, take the time to think about it and mm -hmm. go through it. Mm -hmm. And um, again, it doesn't have to be that hard, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. put something to paper. Yep. I, I always worry about the families who say, no, when mom goes, we're just going to go through it all. We'll, we'll go through it. Mm -hmm. And when I think about even my, some of my own family members mm -hmm. who have collected everything they've ever owned and then some, mm -hmm. I think that's going to be a rough day. Mm -hmm. um, and I absolutely, as much as I hate to admit, um, there are some things that I would not want to get like sifted into the junk, so to speak, mm -hmm. but I would absolutely hire a company to just go in and pack it up and sort through mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. and, and that probably would hurt some people's feelings. Mm -hmm. But as a, as a person who's doing the planning, you also have to take some accountability and responsibility for that and say, hey, you know, this is a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, how would I feel if I had to be the one going through all this stuff, trying to figure out what's what? You know what one of the hardest things for me doing this estate sale was? There were two chest freezers in the, in the basement. And they had a garden. And blackberries and corn and frozen squash, hard work, hard work. I had to dispose of all that food because she had been gone seven years. So it had all been frozen <clears throat> seven years. It had freezer burn. And we actually took some to feed to a hog, which was good, and the hog loved it. But, but when you think about, it's very emotional. When you open that chest freezer and you imagine mom and dad with their garden right here on the property, right. and the work and the time they spent together to fill these two freezers, so I told the family, <coughs> leave it alone, Give, don't, let me do it, and I did. I went through the pantry, I went through every item. I donated what was of value and to the thrift stores, a lot of really cool stuff. And then other things, we filled two dumpsters full. And that is sad because a lot of that was hard work that mom and dad put in. That's something emotional you don't wanna deal with. You just don't want to put that burden on yourself. And so I think it's I think it's time that we all pick up the phone and call an attorney at Hartman Law and, and say, we want to sit down. Now, O'Neill, when we, we're going to take a commercial break and when we come back, I want to, you know, give them a time frame, tell them what to be prepared to bring in, and let's really make it simple and, and make it, you know, make it doable. This is 2023. This is the year know what we're facing this year. We know that COVID is still here. People aren't thankfully dying like they were from COVID. I talked to Earl Darby this morning at the funeral home and I said, tell me your numbers on COVID. And he said, well, thankfully people are not dying from it like they were. 
because I wanted to know, is it still of great urgency? Do you call them regularly? Or? I love him. <laughs> he's a Shriner, and he's going to be on the show in the near future, Green Pop Car Shows. So, yeah, I call a funeral home regularly. I call Kevin Roper. I call, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, you got to call. You got to keep in touch with your local funeral home. But it is important because COVID was, we were waiting two weeks to have a funeral sometimes because the funeral home was so backed up. And thank goodness we're not in that situation now. But it is time, 2023 is the year that you need to get it together and, and really sit down with your children and say, you know. And it, it's like this family that I've been dealing with, it's been a lot on them because there was so much to go through, so much to go through. And, and especially since dad was left seven years after mom passed because dad didn't want any of mom's stuff done away with. And, and it, was, it was precious, it was, it was a true love story. Yeah. So we're gonna take a commercial break. When we come back, we're gonna give you a time frame on what you need to do, how you need to prepare, and then you just pick up the phone and call her. She'll sit down with you. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Good advice from Sweet O'Neill at Hartman Law. Pick up the phone and call them, 706-253-7700, and they can help guide you through what is not a fun process, but it can be made simpler. Now, I keep telling y'all, get this book. I don't have time to sit and read a whole book at a time, but I love reading these pages and excerpts. And today, I wanna read you one more thing out of Mike Smith's book. I've learned a lot of things as a volunteer firefighter and EMT. The career firefighters, paramedics, and EMTs run a lot of medical calls on people called frequent flyers. These people may have medical issues, but at times they are not real serious problems. They call 911 to have the personnel come to their home. These people are lonely and they crave attention from people, people to interact with them and show them they care about them. They are transported a good portion of the time to medical facilities where other people attend to them. The firefighters and paramedics become familiar with the address when the call goes out and they know about the people before they arrive on the scene. Studies have shown that there are millions of people that feel alone and think that no one cares about them. God's word tells us we are never alone. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Give all your worries and cares to God for he cares about you. Yet I will always, yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. There are 365 verses in the Bible that tell us God will never leave or forsake us. A verse for every day of the year. As God gives us opportunities, let's show them we care. God will make himself known to those who are lonely. Today, today, pick up your phone. Call somebody that you know lives alone. Pick up your phone and say, hey, I'm going to town, do you need anything? If you make a big pot of soup today, take a quart of soup to one of your lonely neighbors. There's somebody out there who is lonely and who is hurting. And when you think about how I have seen the end of so many lives where people lived alone, I had a precious, precious lady here in LJ. I had her home listed. She was a severe diabetic. And I thank God every single day that I had back-to-back -back showings on her home. She went into a diabetic coma and somebody who was showing the house 30 minutes after it had been shown, they walk in and find her laying in the kitchen floor. She was rescued, the paramedics, the EMTs came, they took her to the hospital, they got her sugar back stable and she lived three more years. I'm so thankful for those EMTs, those firefighters, for those, you know how you see those God moments? We knew it was God because every 30 minutes there had been a showing at this home. At 11.30 that morning, the showing went well and she was fine. At 12.30 that afternoon, which was the people left around 10 to 12, and then 30, 40 minutes later, somebody showed up to show it again and they found her unresponsive in the kitchen floor. So many people live alone. So many people don't want to bother their children. So many people are left without their children because possibly they have outlived their children. If you have a neighbor, if you know of a friend, if you just know of somebody from church who needs to be checked on, check on them. 
give them a hug from afar and, and call them and just read them a Bible verse. Just something as simple as reading a Bible verse. Or if you're smart, you'll pick up Mike's book. And remember, God keeps showing up. He keeps showing up at times that we never, never expect it. And then at times that we hope he will show up, he just, he does, he does. And I saw it this week when I got that call yesterday morning, I absolutely was ready to shout. It was amazing. I was full of joy. I was full of laughter. I was so happy when I called the, uh, the young man who's been cleaning out his mom's house. And I said, thank you, Lord, for this. This was one of those rarities. And I just, I thank God that the probate of Dawson County has, um, I don't know if they stepped in to stop it. I'm not sure what happened. I gave them the contract and showed them that we had an offer of $98,000 more on the table. I don't know what happened, but I'd say it's a God thing. God showed up once again. I'll see you again soon on ETC. And don't forget, all of our programs are on YouTube, so you can watch them anytime, day or night. Stay safe, stay warm, and I'll see you again soon. Bye, everybody.